Martin Jones, take one. I work for the University of Edinburgh and I'm an integration architect for the university. Uh, I help uh, integrate our on-premise systems with our cloud-based systems and we're using WSO2 uh, for that integration. The university uh, procured for a, a new, uh, some new core systems, uh, went with a new vendor and that was cloud-based, so suddenly went from on-premise point to point um, to a cloud-based and it was quite, quite an aggressive time scale, like quite an aggressive project. The, well, the key driver for that, that project, um, looking at some of our on-premise systems were aging. We did an, uh, an evaluation process and then we thought, you know, we really like just using this as a service. Um, it means that we can just crack on and develop the integrations, focus on, on, on our business and what we need for them, rather than having to think about a platform and infrastructure. So at that point, we made the decision um, to migrate to Corio. And the, so all of our APIs have now been migrated over, over to Corio, um, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I think it's going from API Managed Cloud, which I think was API Manager 2.6, to, to Corio. Yeah, it's a big leap. Um, I'm finding it, yeah, I'm finding new features like every week, um, yeah, it's I'm really enjoying that that element of it. The next, so the next step is is to migrate our integrations um, and the message message queues behind them. So we've started that process. That's that's well underway. I would say that using a more event driven approach and using APIs certainly. I've certainly seen the the data flowing in more in real time now, and it's it's knowing that, or even seeing a change triggered, you know, in our HR system and flowing through to all the all the applications that need to be notified, um, you know, in in minutes. So that's 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 really satisfying. Yeah, event driven's been that's that's a that's been a really big game changer for us. The other thing I, I guess like moving to Corio is Kubernetes. Um, at the moment, being on on a having all our applications on on one uh, shared shared platform means that everything is logged to the one like one one log stream. So trying to pick out you know the individual transactions for a particular integration. Um, required some kind of searching through the AWS logs and but now that we're moving to Kubernetes you know with Corio seeing all those logs for each integration contained in one place uh, that's that's a big win yeah I think as also as well uh, especially with the university uh, beginning of the academic year we see quite a lot of uh, activity so knowing that there's auto scaling built in that's that for me, that's a big winner as well. We were looking at uh, different integrations and different design patterns, um, and we, we came up with some really good solutions. Um, WSO2 helped kind of provide some proof of concepts and, and some initial code, and I think that gave us a really good start, certainly in terms of um, like best practices, and, and also I think, yeah, understanding like the the business needs behind that first, uh, and then arriving at the technical solution later, that that was that was crucial. The support is one of the reasons that I really enjoy working with WSO2. Um, so we've got support not just for the products that we use, but we've also got um, a consultancy element to our support contract. So sometimes, if if we've got a question, um, we're trying to evaluate, you know some different different solutions and um, we're able to reach out in WSO2 to WSO2 and say you know listen we're, we're trying to evaluate a couple of different ways of doing this um, can you give us any advice any pros and cons that maybe we haven't considered um, that's quite valuable but with the support um, whenever we've logged us a, a ticket we get acknowledgement you know within minutes normally and depending on the priority it's, it's normally resolved like really quickly yeah so I'm 
I'm extremely happy. And I, th I think it's as well, it feels very personal when you're dealing with WSO2. We would meet online, um, even just to kind of say, how are you getting on? Um, might not have been anything pressing or anything that we needed to, to cover, but just to have that, con you know, that, that personal contact. Yeah, I think that's, that's really important. Um, very satisfied, very satisfied. Yeah, I really enjoy work using the product. I would also add that where we've been looking for changes or where we've kind of identified that would, it would be really great to have something, you know, something else. Um, I've actually seen WSO2 respond and kind of add that in, into the product life cycle and I've seen new features introduced. Uh, so that feels, feels like we're being you know, valued and listened to, and we've got some kind of shape in the direction of what's what's been created. We've undergone a lot of change um, over the last five years, um, moving our core systems uh, to the cloud. Um, since then, we've moved. We've also moved our timetabling system to the cloud, and that's happened in parallel with our migration to to Corio. So there's a lot of moving parts. Um, we're about to start moving our estates um, to the cloud as well. Uh, and I can see, I mean, I can see more and more systems moving to the cloud. So I think from my perspective as an architect, what I would like is once, once we've got our systems, these integrations kind of working, I would really like to take a step back for a little bit and see what we can refactor, um, if there's things that uh, need to be, where we could merge components, for example, uh, make more reusable services. I think my, my, one of my goals with uh, using WSO2 for integration is, is to make services as reusable as possible. There's certainly an appetite, there's a huge appetite um, within the university for APIs and, and, and especially for event-driven data. Thank you.